Hi, this is Congressman Guy Reschenthaler, and you're listening to Get Going with Guy, a conservative's guide to cutting through the propaganda of the woke left and the mainstream media, a podcast where hypocrisy has no home. All right, gang, you know the drill, bluff, bottom line up front. Here's the bottom line. Democrat policies such as defunding the police and eliminating cash bail are literally killing people. If you think that sounds drastic, if you think that's hyperbole, let's just look at the statistics. Let's look at the context. Let me give you some numbers. From 2019 to 2020, if you look at the 50 largest urban areas in the United States, you saw an increase in homicide rates of 35%. And what's causing this spike not only in homicides, but also in, in all crime? Well, I think it's very clearly the woke reforms that you're seeing in a lot of our major cities. Democrats and their allies in the far left are trying to eliminate cash bail, and they're really big into decriminalization. Now, historically, what's helped in big cities in particular is what's called the broken window theory, where you make sure that any crime at any level is addressed. Because if criminals know they can get away with small offenses— then they will then uh, go on to commit larger offenses. So we need to make sure that we're going after and criminalizing all crime. Decriminalization leads to more crime. Also, we need to go back to the bail system that we had in place before that included cash bail. And look, I'm one of the few members in Congress that have actually set bail. I was a magisterial district judge. Before then, I was a defense attorney in the Navy. I prosecuted terrorists in Iraq. I have a very good grasp on the criminal justice system, and I can tell you there's a role for cash bail. But when you have these catch and release programs with criminals and defenders, it leads to more crime. Let's just look at New York, for example. New York York City got away with cash bail and they saw a spike in crime. In 2020, you had 482 criminals that were released that then went on to reoffend. And some of these offenses were atrocious. You had a scammer who had 142 arrests that was released and then went on to reoffend. Now you can say, oh, guy, that's a nonviolent crime. Okay, it might be nonviolent, but when a scam artist, a con artist goes and scams your grandmother out of her life savings, it's not so, it's not so funny. That's a serious consequence. You had a sex offender who was released despite trespassing at a school. That's horrendous. That person never should have been released. You had somebody with anti-Semitic assaults on his record. He was released, and then shockingly, shockingly enough, he went on to reoffend. These individuals that are getting released are going on to commit more crime. That is clearly a problem. And, and guys, it's just not New York. Look at San Francisco. San Francisco didn't charge a man for assault. That man then went on to kill a seven-month-year-old baby. These are real consequences to real policies the Democrats are enacting. And they can say all they want that they don't mean defund the police when they say defund the police. And I say that's nonsense because they actually have defunded the police. AOC herself has said that defunding the police means defunding the police. Democrats mean it. In LA, they cut the police budget by $175 million. New York City cut their budget by $1 billion. That's billion with a B. $1 billion gone from the New York City budget. And if you just don't look at the cuts to the police, what this is doing, it's demoralizing the police. It's demonizing the police. It's discouraging what prevents crime, and that is community policing. And if you look at the cities that have demonized and demoralized the police the most, you see huge spikes in homicides. Case in point. Milwaukee, homicides up 96%. Louisville, homicides up 78%. Minneapolis, homicides up 72%. Look, guys, the stats don't lie. I can go on and on. Seattle, homicides up 68%. Memphis, homicides up 58%. New York, 41%. Philadelphia, 40%. This is the murder rate. This is homicide. People are literally dying. And the Democrats, they double down on this. What they see as criminal justice reform is releasing offenders back into society. That's not real criminal justice reform. Criminal justice reform is going after recidivism. We want to reduce the recidivism rates. You do that by going after the root cause of the problem. I can tell you that I think mental health and the lack of care is a huge problem with crime. I think that a lot of people have mental health issues and they self-medicate through illegal substances and they, get a, they start to abuse illegal substances. That leads to crime. I think what we need to do is we need to focus on mental health resources for prisoners and people in the criminal justice system. Focus on resources for substance abuse. Try to get people off drugs if they're abusing alcohol and try to help that as well. That will reduce recidivism. Of course, we need to look at re-entry after people have been incarcerated. I've got a bill with a Democrat from Delaware called Clean Slate 
You would help nonviolent offenders re-enter without the stigma of a criminal record. They would get a second chance to fulfill the American dream. That's good. We also should look at faith-based programs, academic programs, to make sure prisoners have hope, that they feel like they have self-worth and they can re-enter society without committing crime. That is going after recidivism rates, which will stop future crime. And then further, we should look at eliminating crime by going back to the broken window theory of policing, and also doubling down on community policing. We have policemen that are encouraged to engage in the community, not police who are staying in their car because they're afraid of a viral video that will ruin their careers. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, just call me Guy, and I'll see you next time.